peel it all back, and the only thing that matters is what you've had. That's family, that's friends, that's love. Cheers. Cheers. I first saw the UFC in 1996. I was in third grade, and the second I saw the sport, I was just infatuated with it. You had these really big buff guys getting beat up by this little scrawny dude in a karate suit. And myself, I was a very scrawny kid growing up, so it was like, the light at the end of the tunnel. I always thought that Michael would be something, you know, like do something big, because whatever he has a passion for, he just wraps his arms around it with full force. You know, it's just all or none. Yeah. <laughs> I always envisioned my journey to my dreams went through The Ultimate Fighter. Me winning a world title goes through The Ultimate Fighter. Everything goes through that show. I'd rather go the hard way. I'd rather have my journey be a lot more dirt than paved roads, I guess you could say. Our family is a very interesting dynamic. My dad set a standard for me at a young age. My dad wasn't a fighter. You know, my dad played basketball and ran track. But I saw his fighting spirit through his work ethic, whether it was sick, rain or shine, however he felt, it didn't matter. Like, he, he always showed up for work. He always gave his 100%. I, I feel like I got a lot of those parts of his fighting spirit still in me. I found out about my dad being sick on my mom's birthday. You know, I'm like working my full-time job, I'm coaching, and you know, he's just like, you know, keep doing your thing, keep fighting, you know, everything's gonna be fine, it's not a big deal. You know, so I'm like, you know, it's not a big deal that I'm not over there, I'm gonna keep doing my thing. And then I find out about Ultimate Fighter tryouts, and I get super excited, and, and then right as I'm finding out about tryouts, I'm also finding out that things are not as good as he says they are. Things are not going the way he's telling me, you know, and uh, it wasn't until this one specific day Imagine like your your wildest, craziest dream you've had in your head your whole life just clashed with like your ultimate nightmare. Like is two worlds just slamming together. While well, I was at practice, getting warmed up, got yanked from the class and uh, was told that I needed to call my mom. She just told me that, uh, that my dad passed away last night. You know, it was a lot to digest. I knew it was coming. The toughest part was I knew I was never going to see my dad again. It was like, I'm walk the second I walk out the door, you're not going to be here on June 2nd when this thing gets done. We, we were very aware of that. Like, him and I kind of discussed it. Like, hey, this is it. You know, like, we had a good run. His first thing he said to me out of anything, the very first thing he said is he was just like, Michael, no matter what, you got to promise me, don't bail on this Ultimate Fighter thing. You have to promise it. Like, no matter what happens to me, you're gonna follow through with your dreams. Not often do you get that kind of weight put on your shoulders, so it's like, I gotta see this thing through the way that we talked about it. 21 men have been named the ultimate fighter. Tonight, it'll be Ally Aquinta or Michael Chiesa who enters that elite group. Michael Chiesa! This is my job now. This is my dream. I gotta show that I'm part of a new generation of fighters. I'm not here to be second best. I'm here to win. I'm here to be a champion. The feeling of coming home December 30th on a win and being able to share that moment with the people that I love most, that's how I envision my win. And then I said to Brody. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna give cheers to you guys, to friends and family. Uh, you know, you take away the titles, the wins, the bright lights, the octagon, take it all away from me, and I still have the thing that matters most, and that's you guys, friends, family, and love. Cheers. Cheers.